Hi, I'm Andrew. And I'm Dave, and we are the IB English Guys. Mr. Cohen, what are we going to talk about today? Mr. Jobs, we're going to talk about travel writing today. Folks, pre-COVID, we all used to enjoy traveling. There were plenty of places to go. Travel writing is amazing. It gives you information about the destinations. It gives you information about places you might want to visit. It's sort of a window into a place you get to before you actually get there. Yeah. I love travel writing. Me too. You see travel writing, you know, every, every online newspaper will have a travel section. We also have travel magazines that have travel pieces. They're, they're really also have great images and things we can look at, and they're highly informational, and we like to look at them. Yeah, folks, we want to talk a little bit about the conventions of travel writing right now and give you maybe eight or ten things to look for when you if you should encounter a piece like this. The first thing that we sometimes see in travel writing are personal experiences or anecdotes of the author. Typically, this is a place that the writer will have visited before, and he or she will be able to share lots of insights and plenty of tips about that destination. Yeah, it makes me want to do it and be a come travel writer myself. Uh, we also see proper nouns. We see names of hotels, names of restaurants, names of cities and places because they want to give us those rich details. So we want to look for the names. Yeah, and obviously when you go to those places, Mr. Giles, you want to make sure that you know the dates that you can go there. You want to make sure that you have some insight into the etiquette. So the third thing you'll see is oftentimes destination information. People need to know what to do when they get there, and that's what this information seeks to accomplish. Yeah, these travel writers, they're, they're writing about, about foreign countries and these rich places, so obviously they're gonna use very descriptive language, they're gonna have all this rich imagery, because they want us to sort of see and hear and taste all the different things that they're experiencing. Yeah, and if they want us to see these things, Mr. Giles, of course adding lots of great visuals and links to other information is essential. Uh, a good image can really entice a traveler to visit, so you'll see some pretty spectacular images when you look at travel writing. Yeah, and, and the way it's structured is also important to pay attention to. We're thinking about headings and subtitles and different sections. They wanna make it clear and easy to read, so we wanna look for that as well. Yeah. Also, typically the person writing the piece, Mr. Giles, will give some advice. Not only will they just talk about the places, the destinations, the restaurants, the hotels, but they'll give you advice as to which ones are better, which ones are the best, and just kind of put their own personal touch on your trip. I like that. We want to also pay attention to tone. Is it really admiring tone? It, how, how do we describe? Is it flattering? Is it critical? So we want to look for words that have this, have tone attached to it. Yeah, and you want to look for really impactful verbs as well. Uh, oftentimes travel reviews will be in the past tense, assuming the right has been there before, but you also want to look out for modal such as uh, should, can, might, must, have to. You want to look at the degree of certainty that goes with some of these verbs as well. The last thing is, is interesting. We want to look for, and this is oftentimes fairly subtle, is look for how much these articles are also promoting or advertising a certain hotel, a certain restaurant, a certain place. So we want to think about that. Is there embedded advertising in the travel writing yeah. itself? Yeah, sometimes these text types really blend advertising and they travel do. writing, and that's kind of what we have today, folks. So. Before we go on, uh, I do want to go ahead and read the guiding question for this piece for today. And the guiding question is as follows. How does the website combine elements of advertising and travel writing to encourage readers to visit Spain? Giles, do your thing. Yeah, well, we're I, actually, they're making it very clear that there is there are elements of advertising, so advertising techniques and features, but also the elements of travel writing that we talked about. So the combination of those things, a lot of these guiding questions ask us to look for the interplay between two different things. That's what they're asking us to do. And again, we're talking about encouraging us to visit Spain. So what is it about Spain that they're going to focus on Mr. in this Giles, article? Pre-COVID, I love Spain. I visited Spain. Folks, now is a great time for you to pause the video, uh, open up the link down below, and please spend about five minutes of reading time going through this travel piece titled Experience experiencing flamenco in Spain. Yeah. Okay, so now that you've done that, let's first take a look at what, what we notice about this text, and we're gonna do a little bit of deconstruction of it. The first thing I notice is this, this title, Experiencing Flamenco in Spain. We're obviously focusing on flamenco dancing and the flamenco, um, the, the traditions in Spain itself, and I like that focus, that's interesting. I like the active verb, experiencing. It makes me wanna do it now, Mr. Giles, I love that. You know, I also noticed that, and this, this is sponsored by the Marriott Bonvoy Boundless Card from Chase. That's super interesting. What do you think about that? Well, I think, first of all, if they've sponsored this article, then, then obviously they paid for it. That's what that means. And so there's going to be some embedded advertising in the text itself, not only for Chase, but also for the Marriott. That's that's something, if you miss that detail, you're missing some key aspects. Well, speaking of details, Mr. Giles, it says that this particular piece is part of Travel Tales, a series of life-changing adventures on afar.com. 
So this is a piece that's sort of embedded within another piece. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Um, so that's good. Now, no, I notice also we have this very rich language. We talk about life changing, the word inspired and inspiration and hope. These are very powerful and loaded words that I think are at attached to, to their, their particular article. Yeah, and I think that was a part of the piece where you actually get into Spain, Mr. Giles, and they open up with some really beautiful descriptive language and parallel structure with the gorgeous guitar, heavenly singing, artistic dancing, colorful costumes. That sounds impressive. That sounds like a place I'd like to visit. That's absolutely. probably why I visited. Yeah, absolutely. And they're making his, the motif of time. They're talking about the 16th century. Again, it's informational. They're giving us about the history of flamenco dancing. But again, all that rich language, the flame of flamenco, the alliteration of that would be something to talk about. And the, and the, the imagery of the melodies wafting through the streets. So very evocative yeah, language. Yeah, you know, I like the evocative language. But now I love that last declarative sentence. Here are two places to experience that. And now they're going to tell us about Madrid and Granada. Which yeah. are, I think that's really skillful how they've done that. And here are the subheadings. Here's how it's structured. We're thinking about Madrid and then Granada. So it's very clear and easy to read. We notice also this reference to this very specific hotel with the hyperlink that's attached to it. Again, more advertising. More right? advertising, more commercial implications. That sounds like someone's about to get paid, Giles, okay? Again, I love that same combination of parallel structure. This time we have the arched windows, the lavish stonework, dazzling details, and gorgeous columns. I feel like this writer is really repeating this parallel structure, and they're using descriptive language and really trying to entice us to spend some money and go travel. They're heaping on the adjectives. Gorgeous, lavish, arched. I mean, they've got a lot of rich adjectives they're talking about. Yeah, it's about, about time to get that credit card out, Giles. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay, then they, they say, then go flamenco in Madrid. And interesting they use that command because they're telling us to go do that in Madrid well, with an exclamation mark. Yeah, I think that really shows some fantastic tone there. The imperative command with that enthusiasm really shows the, the energy behind this piece, right? And, and maybe uh, they, they have other things. Maybe you want to do lessons and classes, Giles. Maybe architecture is not your thing. So they're giving you another avenue of exploration. If you don't want to take classes, Giles, what else could you do? You can go shopping. And I think, again, the use of the question, the hypophora, the shopping for flamenco wear, and then they give you the answer of where you can find those different dresses and and Good and old hype before it strikes again, huh, Josh? We like that. We like and that one, the too. The thing I notice about this entire piece, it's very much engaged with the reader. They're using colloquial language, using questions. They're really, like, grabbing well, the reader and the synthetic Well, yeah, here's the colloquial language right there. Real deal and catching a recital. That's really informal, casual language. But because they've sort of close that distance between reader and author. I feel comfortable with this writer now, and I'm okay to that with that colloquial language. Yeah, me too. And again, they're talking about the singing and dancing and clapping, and we interesting, interesting language there, and then even using the native language and the Spanish. Yeah, you'll see that there. a lot of times, because travelers need to know a little bit about that native language. So that's a really intentional choice. I think it's a clever choice, talking about evaluation, right? Yeah. So now we have the second part of the text, which is talking about Granada, which is, again, using a lot of those same features where they're talking about the earliest roots and the history of flamenco. But again, using more hyperlinks to the hotels that would be uh, probably a Marriott hotel. Giles, I've already talked about the parallel structure a million times. Will you talk about that one? Yeah, we see the parallel structure of the, the arched windows and the vaulted ceilings and the elegant terraces, which is, again, the similar structure that they're using. Yeah, again, coming back to that imperative language, check to see take a tour, very commanding language. They want you to spend money and they're going to very subtly put those imperatives in to talk you into doing that. Yeah, very so nice. I think what you're talking about, since you're mentioning this, it's it's that guiding questions asking us about the interplay between, yes, the travel writing and all those rich descriptive things that we talked about, but also the embedded advertising that's there to promote the hotel, to promote the product, and to sell the credit card. Well, Mr. Jaws, I think our last video, we talked about the bookends, the introduction, and the conclusion, and how those match. Can we take a look at the end of this piece? It yeah. says, empower your own travel tales with the Marriott Bonvoy Boundless Card. Learn more at MarriottBoundlessCard.com. Well, we saw that at the beginning about this card. What are they trying to do here? They're trying to create an association between this product, their card, and the, the rich experiences that it can provide. And this, the subtext is that when we have this card, it's going to then open up all these windows to these great doors. However, what are they not telling us about credit cards? Mr. Giles, they're not talking about credit card debt. They're not talking about interest. They're not talking about the thousands upon millions upon billions of people maybe who, who have trouble with these things. That's not what they're talking about. They're only That's focusing right. on the positives. They are focusing on the positives, but they're making me want to go back to 
Spain and go check out Flamenco. So <laughs> Indeed, I love that. Folks. folks, just to remind you of the guiding question, how does the website combine elements of advertising and travel writing to encourage readers to visit Spain? We recommend that you try to craft a thesis, write a rudimentary outline, and then come back for video two. We'll show you a model response and you can see how you did. This is part of the countdown to paper one and we're almost done. We're almost there, folks. Stay with us. See you next time. Bye, guys.